I just got home, my back door is kicked in, and my girl ain't answering the phone. Investigators found Angela dead in her Minot home in November of 2015, and roughly a month later, they arrested her ex-husband, Richie Wilder Jr., for her murder. The only person that we think could have something to do with this, from the information that we've gathered so far, is you. Investigators say 27-year-old Cynthia Wilder helped her husband, Richie Wilder Jr., plan the 2015 killing of his ex-wife, Angela. Yeah, we had this planned out. You were the one person who could have spared Angela Wilder's life. You chose not to do so. On November 13th of 2015, Chris Jackson came home from work to find his pregnant fiancée, Angela Wilder, dead on the bedroom floor. She had been viciously stabbed in front of her two-year-old son, who was alive and unharmed in his crib. The door of the home had been kicked in, but nothing seemed to be missing. This was a deliberate attack on Angela. But how did this mother of three, with a fourth one on the way, who was working hard to become a nurse, end up brutally murdered in her own home? To understand her story better, it's important we understand the multiple challenges she faced in her 30 years of life. Angela Shannon Wilder was born September 30, 1985, in California. When her parents separated and her mother remarried, they settled in Alabama, where both she and her sister attended and graduated high school. Angela loved animals, nature and hiking, and she was a great student. While she was in high school, she met Christopher Jackson, who became her boyfriend. The two dated on and off for years until Angela made her move to college and they ended their relationship. Ever since she was a kid, Angela was interested in the medical field. More specifically, she was interested in pediatrics. She worked hard and got a full scholarship from the army to study at the University of South Alabama it was there when she met her first husband. After dating for a short while, Angela became pregnant and the two got married. However, because of her pregnancy, Angela lost her scholarship and had to put her studies aside. The couple's marriage wouldn't last long. Her husband, whose name is not publicly shared, was not involved in raising their newborn daughter. So shortly after giving birth, Angela and her husband got divorced and she won full custody of the child. Her husband decided to step out of the picture and not be involved in her life at all, giving up his parental rights and leaving Angela to raise her baby all on her own. Although her life was shifting the planned course once again, Angela never gave up. She was strong-minded, and with the help of her family, she moved back to Alabama, and as well as working, she would take classes here and there to keep building towards her goal of becoming a nurse. She also began attending church again with her family. This is where she reconnected with a childhood neighbor, Richie Wilder. Richie and Angela knew each other since they were kids, since they grew up in the same area and attended the same church. They were never friends, but in 2006, when Angela returned home with a baby, she and Richie connected. He was kind, generous, and cared for Angela's daughter as if she were his own. Both Angela and her family were excited for this relationship, and in 2009, the couple got married. Richie formally adopted Angela's child, and the two started a life together. Richie was in the military too, and in 2010, the couple moved to an Air Force base in North Dakota. Just as they moved, Angela also announced she was pregnant. The newlyweds were expecting their first child together, who was born in the spring of 2011. However, the move to North Dakota was not as smooth as they expected, and after a short time there, Richie began to change. He became more controlling and would often snap at Angela even commenting on her physical appearance when she was pregnant. He began telling Angela what to wear to church or how to do her hair, and he also disrespected her family, making fun of them and their beliefs. Angela was spiraling into depression. She had no friends, she was away from her family, and her husband wasn't treating her well. Things between her and Richie seemed to improve when they welcomed their baby boy in March of 2011. But soon, things took a turn and became even worse than before. Richie had begun abusing her physically, and would even threaten to kill her. Angela was terrified for her and her children, but
but before she could leave, it was Richie who asked her for a divorce in October of 2011. He accused her of being paranoid and crazy. It was a tough fight, but a court finally gave Angela custody of the children, and Richie was kicked out of the military for abusing his wife. Angela was once again forced to rebuild her life, but this time, she rebuilt it with the help of an old boyfriend, Chris Jackson. Years had gone by, but the two found each other and started dating again. Chris moved to North Dakota and got a job at Walmart to support their growing family. Before long, in 2013, they had their first child together. Angela was back in school and working on her degree again. She wanted to become a nurse and was convinced it was never too late to pick up where she left off. Chris and Angela got engaged and were planning on getting married before welcoming their second child together, since in November of 2015, Angela had just found out she was pregnant again. However, life would be cut short for Angela Wilder, at only 30 years old. Chris worked the night shifts at Walmart and would talk to Angela throughout his breaks. At 11pm on November 12th, 2015, Angela texted her fiancé. She was scared she could hear a noise in the porch of the home. She was convinced someone was trying to open the door. Angela was an anxious person. She just got out of an abusive relationship and had trouble being alone at home. Chris told her not to worry. They lived in a quiet area with barely any crimes. He told her to make sure all the doors were locked and try to relax. Angela told him she would put her two-year-old son to sleep and then would study for an exam she had coming up. At 5 a.m. he called her again, since she was the one who would pick him up from work when his shift ended, but she didn't reply. An hour later he called again, to make sure she was up and on her way to pick him up, but again, there was no answer on her end. Since Angela had just found out she was pregnant and was still in a very early stage, Chris thought maybe something was wrong, so instead of waiting any longer for her, he got in a taxi and went home. He entered through the back door, as he usually did, and as he approached it, he realized it was open, and more importantly, it was kicked in and damaged. Someone had forced their way in. Since he was getting no response from Angela or the children, he called 911, and authorities searched the house. I just got home, my back door is kicked in, and my girl ain't answering the phone. My son's inside with her and everything, I'm about to go in. Why don't you just wait for officers, I'll get him over there. Angela was found in the couple's bedroom, on the floor, her long dark hair stuck to the blood that surrounded her. She had been stabbed to death. In the room, right beside her body, her two-year-old son was in his crib, alive and well. Police began investigations right away, and the first one to be questioned was Chris. Angela's fiancé had a solid alibi. He'd been working all night and had even spoken to Angela on the phone, and everything was confirmed by records. Chris had no reason to kill his fiancé, but he believed he knew who could be behind this crime. Richie's probably the piece of who did it. God, I hope they piece it too. I hope so. He had a strong feeling that Richie, Angela's ex-husband, had something to do with it. Richie claimed he was at home all night with his new wife, Cynthia, also known as Cindy Wilder, a kindergarten teacher. Cindy backed up his story, telling police they both woke up several times during the night because of their baby, and she never saw Richie leave the room. But the more investigators dug into Angela and Richie's past, the more suspicious they became. As well as learning about the couple's troublesome past, another story told by Angela's sister put the focus on Richie. She said Angela called her one day, once she and Richie were separated, and told her she woke up to find Richie in her living room, sitting on the couch. He told her he could find her whenever he wanted to, even if they weren't together anymore. Although Richie claimed he wasn't at the crime scene, evidence suggested otherwise. Angela's blood was found on Richie and Cindy's car, while Richie's DNA was found under the victim's nails. This would be consistent with the scratch they found across his face. Richie was arrested as the main suspect of the case, but the twisted story wasn't over. Weeks after remaining silent while he was in jail awaiting a hearing, he decided to start talking, but what he told police shocked everybody. He tried to pin it all on Chris. 
According to Richie's first statement, Chris Jackson suspected Angela was cheating on him, and he asked for Richie's help to find evidence of the infidelity to help him win custody of the children. But once they were in the house, they encountered Angela, and Chris had lost control and began to attack her, stabbing her more than 40 times until she was dead on the floor. When we first interviewed you, Richie, why did you not tell us this? Well, one, because he kept threatening my family. He's like, if you tell anybody, he's like, I'm going to kill your wife. Investigators didn't believe this version. Not only was there a lack of physical evidence suggesting Chris had done it, but surveillance and witnesses confirmed that he was at work all night, and the testimony he gave was backed up by calls, text messages, and security cameras. Richie was still the main suspect in the story. He also attempted to escape from jail while awaiting trial, further confirming suspicions that he was responsible for the murder. We, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn in the above entitled action to find the defendant, Richie Edwin Wilder Jr., guilty of the crime of murder. Angela's ex-husband was charged with murder, and it took a jury less than an hour to convict him. He was sentenced to life in prison with no parole. But far from being over, this case continued unfolding, with a shocking revelation from Richie's wife, Cindy, who worked as a kindergarten teacher. After crying in the courtroom, where her husband and father of her child was sentenced to life in prison, Cindy continued to defend her husband's innocence, claiming he never left her side that night. But that story would soon crumble, when Cindy began getting close to an old friend of hers. Months after her husband was sentenced, she was having a conversation about the murder of Angela with this friend. He told her he believed killing someone with a knife was not a smart way to get away with it, to which she replied that the knife was never the first option. It was the backup plan if the gun didn't work out. Cindy's friend was shocked and decided to go to the police immediately. He agreed to help in the investigation by letting police put a wire on him while he went out for drinks with his friend Cindy. At the end of the night, Cindy got comfortable enough to start talking about the case again and opened up a whole new story one where Cindy had helped her husband plan the murder of Angela Wilder. He came home that night and he said it got sloppy, she fought back, he had to do what he had to do. She put up a good fight, like, she did. Well, I'm sure she's she fighting for her life. She scratched his face. Cindy Wilder said she was proud of her husband, but she was angry at how sloppy he got the night in question. His impatience is what threw away a plan they had been working on for years, two years to be exact. I helped him clean up. He left again to like dispose of the clothing and the, and the weapon and everything and I thought we were like in the clear. When Richie got home after the murder and told Cindy there had been a fight, she was mad. He should have cut off her fingers to avoid police finding his DNA under her nails, she told her shocked friend. She also admitted to him she had been helping him plan everything, watching Angela's house and even helping him clean evidence afterwards would leave like when he worked nights I would leave the house at like midnight and like sit outside her house in my vehicle seeing who came into the house when her boyfriend left where she, when she, yeah we had this planned out as far as the motive goes Cindy mentioned that Richie hated Angela and was frustrated with how everything had gone down after she accused him of being abusive she believed Richie did the right thing and Angela got what she deserved like went psycho on her because the hate and the anger yeah. and the frustration and, and I totally would have done the same thing. The wire recording was enough to arrest the kindergarten teacher and accuse her of conspiracy to commit murder. When questioned, she defended herself, saying many of the things in the recording were exaggerated to impress her friend. But the tape was basically a confession to everything she'd done to help Richie in his mission to kill his ex-wife. Initially, she was offered a plea deal, which she turned down to the surprise of everyone. The deal would have given her a 25-year sentence, but since she didn't take it, the trial went on and she was finally sentenced to life in prison without a possibility of parole, just like her husband. When she was given the sentence, the judge told her she was the one who could have stopped this nightmare, but she decided to let it happen and help Richie go through with it. Later investigations by researchers of the case seem to imply that Cindy's role is much larger than what she unknowingly confessed to, believing she was there from the very beginning of the plan and even pushed Richie into going through with it. 
Neither Richie nor Cindy have ever appeared remorseful after their sentences, leading the public to believe they were even proud of what they did. Angela Wilder's family still mourn their loved one. Neighbors in the area arranged for the university to present the nursing degree Angela was working on to her family as a way to pay tribute to her and try to relieve the pain caused by this tragedy. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and subscribe if you want to watch more content like this. See you in the next one.